All right, guys, before we jump into like the whole video, I do want to say try to watch the whole video, okay? If you have to break it up in sections and then come back and watch the rest of the video later, because I know the videos can sometimes be a little bit long, but if you don't watch the whole video, you're going to miss a piece of like a portion of the video that's going to be important or a concept that I'm going to be talking about. So if your attention span is very small, then break the video up into sections and then come back and watch it. Because if you don't watch the whole video, you're not going to really gain the value that I'm putting into the video for you guys to understand, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there before the video starts because I know sometimes the videos can be a little bit long. Hey guys, hope everyone has had a great weekend. Today we're going to be going over some more market structure based off things we've already already uh, learned in the previous videos and we're going to add in our higher time frame now to help us identify where the market is heading and also to help us um, avoid some potential losses when we're only paying attention to one swing trend. So adding in another time frame can kind of give you an idea of like when to push those trades and maybe when to not pay attention to those bullish or breaks of structures when they're happening in certain areas. So you can avoid some potential losses there. So just like real quick, we'll kind of go over like what we've talked about already in the previous videos. So we've kind of identified how to mark our swing structure. Okay, and we know whenever we break structure to the upside here, um, when we do break that structure, where's our swing low? Our swing low is going to be that lowest point between where our previous high was and then where we broke structure. And then we talked about, well, once we do break structure, how do we figure out where that swing high is going to be? Well, we talked about once we have that certain pip value that pulls back, that we can go ahead and identify where that swing high is at. But what's the other thing that we can look at to um, show us that our, our swing pullback may be starting? And that's whenever we get a change of character on that same time frame. Okay. I know we talked about like uh, entries in the discord and stuff like that. We're talking about change of character, but whenever you're just looking at change of character or you're looking at your M15 swing trend, and then you have this break of structure to the upside. Well, how do we know whenever that pullback may be starting? Well, whenever we first get that change of character. Okay. So that's not our swing pullback right here, right? That's not a swing pullback. That's just like a little micro pullback. And then we take that high. And then after we take that high, we come down and we take that low. Well, that signifies that, well, our swing um, or our pullback for our swing high, it may be starting now down here into the discount range, okay? So once we get that change of character to the downside, then price may come down, come out to discount areas, which we talked about in the previous video. So if you haven't watched any of these videos, go check them out. But once we get that break to the downside and then we get that bullish change of character, okay, well then that may signify or signal that our... Um, that our trend may be starting over and we may be catching that higher low and ready to push to the upside. So this will be our change of character right here. Once we get that change of character and then we also, like we talked about in the previous video, okay, we use that FIB tool or anything below that 50% level on that FIB at or below that 50% level, we're considered to be down in that discount area. So once we're down in that discount area, we can start looking for long positions um, to play that or to try to catch that higher low to push to the upside. So this is all the stuff we pretty much going over already. Our swing trend, what change of character is, okay? Have the change of character to the downside. Where we want to look for that change of character to try to catch the longs. Okay, so you might have a demand zone down here where you could be looking at your lower time frames. But if you had this bullish change of character on the same time frame, so this is your M15 swing trend, if you get a bullish change of character right here, up here in the premium range, well you may not want to pay attention to it. It's kind of like we talked about in the last video because you're still way up here in the swing range. So these bullish change of characters could just be changing bullish just briefly to kind of come up here and mitigate supply before we start pushing down again. So you only want to pay attention to those changes of characters in the correct places. So with all that said, um, what we're going to do now is take a look at adding in that higher time frame. So, <clears throat> and this will really help you like figure out whenever we have this M15, if you're just following that one swing, well, whenever you have like this bullish break to the upside, well, sometimes you don't want to pay attention to that bullish um, break of structure because it could be happening. This trend could be happening only a pullback on the four hour. So the four hour could be bearish. You get this M15 bullish run. Well, you may not want to continue that bullish M15 trend if we start getting up into the discount ranges for getting into shorts to push the market lower again. So we're just going to take a look at that on our four hour and, and M15. We're going to make this video super clear and super easy to understand because there are some videos out there that could be a little bit confusing, but I feel like the recent price action that we've had can really show you 
how to time those two time frames. All right, so we are looking at our four hour, okay? This is our four hour chart. We have broken bearish down to the downside. And just like when we talked about in our change of character, well, what's the first sign that after we break that structure to the downside that our, the time frame we're looking at may start pulling back into um, an area where we can look for shorts to continue that lower. So that change of character actually never happened until right here. So that change of character happened. None of, if you didn't watch the previous videos, um, on what change of character is like you would know how to mark you would know how to mark where these change of characters would be after we break those lows okay and we just never had that change of character until we got down um, down here to the low right here so once we had that change of character that trend pulled back and a lot of times a change of character on the time frame you're looking at on the lower time frame is a break of structure so if we're looking at the four hour and we see a four hour change of character well that could be a 15 minute um, break of structure so when we're looking at our trend here and we have this push down to the downside, if we're breaking structure to the downside, then this right here is going to be an M15 trend. Okay, We're going to be breaking down to the downside. So how do we know whenever that trend is going to end? Well, if we're looking at the four hour, we can say, well, when we get a four hour change of character, we may see that, well, that's whenever our trend is going to reverse and it's going to start pulling back. If we're looking at the M15, well, we may see a break of structure. Okay, so the M15 was bearish, but then the M15 switches bullish, and that M15 uh, trend change could signify or, or could signal our pullback that's going to start on that four hour. So that four hour may start pulling back, and we may get an M15 bullish run. Okay, so in this case, we did get that run right here, but and it did come up here into the discount areas, but we came down here, and then we had this little bit of... Um, this bullish order flow that started happening. So the so the market kind of changed a little bit on us, but I still want to draw this in because I think it's like a really good example of what's happening here. So if I just kind of mark what has happened right here, and we talk about what our um, what our strong highs are and what our weak lows are, and then vice versa. So if you're in a downtrend, then what is going to be our strong highs? Our strong highs are going to be where that zone was when we broke structure to the downside it makes this a strong high because it broke structure. All right. So even though we did have this little bullish run right here in the middle, well, our swing trend is actually right here. So this is our swing high, our swing low is down here and we haven't broke either one of these yet, but we did have this bullish order flow in the middle. So what you'll see here is right here at the beginning. So we're going to switch and drop down to our 15 minute time frame. So when we had that um, M15 trend change right here, when we broke structure to the upside and we switched bullish, well, we had that little run and that pullback. Well, when we got up here, let's pay attention to what happened here. And also, if we have this discount, so we know this is our four-hour swing high, right? So we had this four-hour swing high, and this is our four-hour swing low. And then if we pay attention to where this trend or this uh, M15 switch back bearish well, it was up here in our discount area for looking for shorts. Okay, so whenever you had this break of structure to the upside, okay, we're following the trend and we're having this bu these bullish break of break of structures. When we get up here into the discount areas, well, we may not want to try to continue to push that um, or push those longs on the M15. We may want to start waiting in, until we can see that M15 switch bearish again. That way we're more in line with the four hour and then the M15 is now in line with the four hour. So the, the farther you get up here in this range, you're really going to start, um, you're really going to start pushing your luck a little bit. We jump back down to the four hour right here. When this starts getting up here into the disc, into this discount area for shorts to push down lower, where you're going to start pushing your luck. If you're still looking for longs up here, even though the M15 is still bullish, you're going to start, it's going to start pushing your luck. So that's why it's nice to look at that higher time frame to know when you may not want to start um, following the trend necessarily on that time frame. And maybe you just want to wait until you get that, um, that M15 bearish, you know, that break of structure to the downside. And then you're realigned with what the four hour is doing. The M15 is now realigned. And now you have much more higher probability setups because your M15 is bearish and your four hour is bearish. So you can see how that would just give you higher probability setups instead of continuing to look for longs up here. But regardless of that, what we did do, we'll just talk about kind of what happened over the last month. So we did come up here, got into the discount area. 
we push down here and then we hit a demand zone even though we are bearish we hit a demand zone and then we started coming back up again so the m15 switched back bullish so let's jump back down to the m15 again okay so eventually we had this bearish run right so we were in line we were in line with the four hour we were in line with the 15 and we had these break of structures to the downside and then we had the bullet the first bullish break of structure right here so we broke bullish and what does that signal to us it says okay well we're breaking bullish but our overall swing structure on the four hour is bearish so we get this first bullish break of structure but it's kind of counter to the m15 and kind of counter to the four hour so like in that case you may want to wait for like two you may want to see the m15 break two levels of structure if it's going to be counter both ways basically so in anyways what ended up happening was we broke back bullish then we broke back bearish again and then we broke back bullish again and then after that happened price started to push back so let's switch back to the four hour again after the price starts pushing back a little bit then what can we say about this um sorry it's a three hour what can we start to say about this high right here all right so let me get this brush this high right here what can we start to say when price starts coming back up what do we think is going to happen to this high well it's probably going to get ran and why is it going to get ran because it failed to put in that swing low so when price starts pushing back up again it's going to be a bad idea to start looking for shorts in this zone even though the four hour is bearish because this this uh internal basically we haven't gone over like internal structure a lot so it's kind of so i almost kind of want to make this video as if like just kind of hide this section over here and just look at it like we were looking at this but um either way we'll just still look at it like internal structure okay so the the price starts pulling back up we start approaching this high well what's probably going to happen well we're probably going to run that high because it failed to break structure to the downside so that's what happened so the m15 switch bullish we had another bullish run and then we broke that high all right so we had this internal break of structure this i boss right here now regardless our four hour is still intact okay so the four hour is still intact our m15 is switched back bullish again we broke this internal high and now so what does that make this zone down here now this is actually now a strong internal low and this is a strong internal low because what did it do it broke structure to the upside okay it broke this structure making this a new strong internal low and so when price starts coming back down again now look where we came down mitigated uh demand again so we have this little demand chain going came down here hit this spot and now look where price is pushing again so what do we kind of think is going to happen right here when price starts pushing up again okay this high didn't accomplish anything did it okay it didn't break this it didn't break our swing low it didn't break the internal low and price is starting to push up back up again well we can kind of start to build the story that well maybe this high may be run so maybe i at least don't want to look for shorts yet okay even though the trend is still bearish i don't the, or the four hours still bearish i don't want to look for shorts yet because this high didn't accomplish anything it didn't break structure to the downside so we just expect these highs to keep getting ran until they don't so and again we'll just kind of jump down to the 15 minute and we'll just look at like oh, get rid of that we'll just look at what this looks like on the m15 and then four hours so we have our four hour kind of swing going on the internal structure at least well during that push up look at our m15 we had these internal break of structures but we had some really big swing ranges on our m15 but regardless that m15 did stick this was a wick break right here we never had that kennel closed down here just wick broke it so that m15 remained bullish until we had that first bearish break of structure to the downside and once we had that m15 trend change well then price started to push back low again okay and now we're just kind of where we are right now i'm going to go ahead and switch back to the four hour now let's get rid of this all right so I'm going to draw this back up again because we could definitely come back up hit this and then break lower i'm not saying that that's not going to happen and we're definitely going to run this high because the four hour is bearish and this is just like a, a a little trend on the way up to mitigate like supply right four hour supply way up here but what i'm trying to say is like whenever you have something like this happen and then you have that pullback okay so we pulled back and then we came back down we're just kind of looking over drawing right and then we came up we broke structure again and now we pulled back down okay well until 
until we get rid of this bullish kind of order flow coming up, why would we want to enter the market right here? Okay, because this is technically a strong internal low. This is a, um, and this is technically technically be weak because it didn't accomplish anything. We're already heading back up. So this could come back up and, this, and just do something like this. Let's just ignore this line over here, okay? So when price is coming up like this, and then you have this push up, we don't want to be entering short in this bear and this bullish momentum right here. We don't want to enter. Um, we don't want to enter short until we see something happen. Now, if we would have taken the low right here, okay, we would have taken that low, then that would have been different. I don't want to predict anymore, like in my trading. So I just want to react to what price is doing. And right now, <clears throat> the internal structure is bullish. Okay, so I'd rather just wait to see something more solid before I start looking for a short again. And so, yeah, I just hope that kind of makes sense with the internal structure. We may have got off track a little bit, sort of, from like what we we're talking about with multi time frame analysis. But um, if we just kind of really want to take anything from this video, when we have that bear or we have that break of structure, whether it's to the upside or to the downside, okay. When we had that break of structure, so in this case, we broke structure to the downside. Well, what's our first indication that that four hour may turn around to start pullback, to start the pullback? Well, our M15 will switch bullish, okay? And then we will have an M15 bullish run. And then what signifies or signals that our four hour is going to be ready to go short again? Well, our M15 will switch back bearish again. And then our M15 will be both aligned with the four hour, our M15 will be aligned, and then we have much more higher probability setups. Okay, so if you kind of want to ignore that we are in a bearish trend, and if this makes it easier for you to see without looking at, so we'll just say that we were breaking structure to, to the upside the whole time, then we can just look at price like this and say, okay, well, our M15 and our four hour would have been aligned right here. And then how do we know whenever that four or that um, four hour is going to start to pull back again? Well, we can say, well, we'll wait on that 15 minute break of structure or that four hour change of character. And then we break structure to the downside. And then we have our pullback. So we would say that our four hour is bearish here, or um, excuse me, in this case, we're gonna say our four hours bullish. Okay, now our four hours pulling back into the discount area. Okay, so here's our premium versus discount tool. So we pull back down. So what do we want to see happen down here in our discount? Well, we want to see our trend change on the M15. So the four hours pulling back, but when our M15 turns around and switches bullish, well, then we can say that, well, now our four hour is going to, it's ready to start running again. And our M15 is ready to run. Both of those trends are aligned now. Now we have much more higher prob probability setups to push that price high. So just imagine for a moment, getting in down here because our time frame entries are the one minute chart. So imagine catching this turnaround down here at the bottom when you're looking at the four hour and then you're looking at the 15 minute and you can, and you hold a trade down here from your M1 entry when you're aligned with the M15, you're aligned with the four hour. When all those things align, the RR that you can get when you're targeting a four hour high. Okay, so obviously you're not gonna get the full RR because you wanna take some profits on the way there. But, I mean, it can just be insane. You can have 50 R trades. You can have just ridiculous amount of R trades. I don't ever have those because I never out, I'd never hold them for that long. But I'm just showing you the potential of trading like this so that you can understand that this is a very, very, very high RR trading system. And it's, but your win rates may be low because even though we are trading like this, you're not always going to pick the best zone maybe or you know, you'll get stopped out if you're on an M1 entry targeting that four hour high, okay? You might just, you know, it will come back and sweep that liquidity before it's gonna continue all the way up there. But I'm just showing you with a low win rate system, a 35%, 30% win rate, that you can still, that that's what that's what supply and demand trading and these smart money concept trading are. They are low, they are low win rate systems with a high RR. So you have to trade like that or you're not gonna be successful trading the system. It's just as simple as that. And you have to be patient also. So these beautiful looking trends that happen like this, they're not always going to be there. And so you're going to have to sit out for a day or two, or you might have to sit out for a whole week. And that's okay because by the end of the month, when you have that whole trading period, you have a 30 day trading period or even a 60 day trading period. Well, you only care what happens at the end of those 60 days. Okay. You're not looking at it 
the, each day I need to jump into the market and I need to ha and I need to be winning these trades. If you're patient enough and you wait for all these trends and everything to just kind of align, um, well then you're going to get that. You're going to get your wins in. Okay. It's not going to be every day. So like, you know, a lot of people, they want to get in the market and they want to trade every single day. They want to make a certain amount of money every single day. Long term though, normally it just never works out for traders who are like that, who are just impatient like that. But if you can start to develop more of a patient mindset and you want to learn to trade like this, just keep following the channel. Okay. I will keep uploading the videos. I know they're coming out a little slow, but you know, uh, I guess I am more of a trader than a teacher, but I am trying to teach you guys more of just kind of how I trade and how I've been taught myself how to trade over the last six years. So, um, I hope this video helped you guys out and we're going to be backpedaling and touching up on these concepts. Every time we move on to another concept, we'll look at what we've talked about before. We'll see what that theory is and then we'll apply that theory, um, into the next video and we'll just keep building upon those concepts that way. If the market looks a little different this day, well, you learned about a concept previously, well, then you apply that concept to what uh, price action is currently looking like. And that's how you develop your trading plan. Okay. So hope this video helped you guys out. Let me know and um, just keep a lookout for the next video. All right. See you guys.